Thank you for joining me today. We're going to call these segments Time with Trey, and they're going to be about 10 minutes long on a daily basis, and we're just going to get into God's Word. This is for those who want to go deeper in their relationship with God. We're going to learn how to apply the Word, how to become doers of the Word. We're going to position ourselves to learn God's heart, learn God's mind, and grow. Be the best us we can be. So get your pen, paper, let somebody know. Let's keep growing. Keep going. Well, hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am really excited about this teaching on righteousness. I've given so many scriptures on the reality that you and I, we are made righteous because of Jesus. And he wants us to live from our place of righteousness in Christ. We're made right. In our last session with Time with Trey, we talked about having a right mindset. And I want to continue down that, that road, so to say, the reality that we're righteous. We're thinking right. We're believing right. We're, we're learning. We're talking right. We're expecting right. Our attitude is good. Let, let's, let's get right into this. Now, we finished last session in Hebrews chapter 5, and he was just talking about if we don't apply the Word of God, and we're not training our physical faculties, our mental faculties with the Word of righteousness, then we're still a baby. So it doesn't matter if you've been in church for 20, 30, 40 years, if, if you don't have the reality that you're righteous because of Jesus, He says, I can't tell you much more until you learn to live from this place of righteousness. Now, this is so powerful as we're going after the heart of God and the plan of God. And I've learned this from several of my uh, spiritual fathers. I've had, you know, some that have transitioned to heaven, other men of God. When we're seeking the plan of God, I've plotted in my life. I've been at this for almost 30 years now. Listen to this. Number one, if you're taking notes, find the will of God in your situation by prayer and meditation on the Word of God. So when we think about, okay, we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, we're going after the things of God, um, and, and sometimes people want to think the plan of God is going to be easy and simple. There's not going to be any obstacles, and you've heard this, probably said it, I've said it before in the past until I learned that, okay, if the door is open and it's easy, then I'll go through it. If the door's open and it's easy, well, then it must be God. And there's times that that happens, but there's a lot of times that that doesn't happen. I mean, you think of the Apostle Paul. If you were to track his life and try to decide whether he is in the will of God or not, whether the door was open, then he wouldn't be in the will of God a lot, according to <laughs> two-thirds of the New Testament. There was a lot of times he had to take the Word of God and knock the door open and knock the door down and go through it and possess the land. And a lot of times people don't want to take that responsibility. So circumstances don't determine the will of God. God's Word determines the will of God. Please, that's, a, that's a profound statement. That gets you looking inside instead of looking out here. Out here is external. One guy says the people that are always dreaming, they're always out here focused, but the person who's alive is in here. They're realizing I'm righteous. I have the greater one in me, and I'm going to hear God, and I'm going to apply God's word, and I'm going to, even if the door's shut and God says, that's your territory, I'm going to take the word, knock it down, and I'm going to go and do and be and everything God's called and created me to be. But that's a confidence that comes from righteousness and not comes from circumstances. So, so listen to this. Find the will of God in prayer and meditation of the Word of God. So you create an environment because you're thinking right, believing right, talking right. His Word is always right. So by your reading the Word of God, you're, you're meditating, which doesn't mean, you know, pop a squat and yoga pants. If that's what you want to do, that's great. But it means to, to roll it over. It means to speak it out to yourself. It's like an old cow chewing her cud down the patch or pitcher with me. She's chewing it up, and, mm, 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 and she swallows it and gets the nutrients out, and, mm, and she regurgitates it, and then she chews it up and swallows it. Mm, and, and that's the process of meditation. It says, find the will of God by reading. God's Word by prayer, by meditation of God's Word. Number two, once you've found the will of God for your situation in your life, you find the will of God by His Word. You find the will of God by His Spirit. Don't be moved by outward circumstances. You know, a lot of times people want to fleece. They won't put fleeces out. That's in the Old Testament. 
That's Gideon. He didn't have the Holy Spirit like you have the Holy Spirit. He didn't have uh, the Word of God like you and I have the Word of God. So he had to be led by outward circumstances. God doesn't want us to be led by outward circumstances necessarily. He wants us to learn to be led by the Spirit of God. So number two, once you find the will of God, which is the Word of God, or you get a word through prayer, which is going to agree with the Word of God, then no longer ask everybody's opinion because they're not the one who made you. They're not the one who wired you. They're not the one who designed you. They're not the one who graced you. There's only one person who knows why you're on this planet and what he's called and created you to do. Now I'm talking about a mature relationship with God. I'm talking about becoming the person you've called to be. I'm talking about fulfilling the will of God upon the earth. I'm not talking being religious. I'm not talking just going through the motions. You hear the voice of God and you go after it. You, you, you become everything God's called and created you to be. So number one, you find the will of God through prayer, meditation, the word by the Holy Spirit. Number two, once you know, yes, you can talk to your spouse, you can talk to your team, but once you know and hear, it really doesn't matter what anybody else says. My team, my wife, my crew, they know once I hear God, that's the direction we're going and we're going to do it at all costs. No matter how much it costs, no matter how long it takes, no matter what obstacles we've got to overcome, because with God's help, all things are possible. To the person who believes. Now we're talking about thinking right, believing right, talking right. Number three, get your job done at all costs, no matter what you face. Get your job done. Jesus said, Father, I've completed the work that you've given me to do upon the earth. I want to say the same thing. Father, I've completed what you put me here to do. No matter what it costs, don't allow money to stop you, people to stop you, the devil to stop you, family members to stop you. So once you know the will of God, Paul says in Galatians 1.16, he says, I no longer confer with flesh and blood. Why? Because God's word and his spirit and what God tells you, that's the majority. God wants us to trust him. He wants us to realize we're right and he's for us and not against us. Then we get our job done at all costs. Now, think about this righteous mindset comes from seeking Him. Matthew 6, 33, seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, His kingdom and His righteousness, His way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given us besides. Listen, you're, you're, you're right. He says, now seek the King, seek His dominion, Seek his will being done on earth just like it is in heaven and his righteousness, his right way of doing things. And then everything else that everybody's looking for, it's going to be added unto us. We have rights as children of God, and he wants us to come boldly into his presence with the name of Jesus. And he wants us to receive our rights, right mindedness, right believing, right words, right approach, right attitude because of the blood of Jesus. You are righteous, and because of your righteousness, you're going to give and serve and bless and and forgive and pray and worship, not trying to please God, but, but it's because you're right. You do it out of a sense of honor, respect, love for the things of God. You're not trying to win God over. You've already won God over. You're made in His image and likeness, and through Jesus, you're made right. He says, now keep seeking Him and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, then everything else is going to be added unto you. He says, but come boldly to me. Listen, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. He says, Inasmuch then as we have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith in him. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are without sinning. Let us, verse 16, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly, listen to that, fearlessly and confidently and boldly and fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help, well-timed help coming just when we need it. 
He wants us, because we're right, to know that we belong in the presence of God. We belong in the throne of God. He wants us to approach Him boldly and confidently and fearlessly. And, and righteousness is the ability to approach God without a sense of guilt and fear and shame and condemnation because we know we're right. And the only reason we're right is because of Jesus, not because of anything we've done, but believe in the sacrificial work of Jesus, His shed blood that allows us to come into God's presence because we're made right through Jesus. Listen to this. Isaiah 32, 17 says, the effect of righteousness, the effect of righteousness will be peace, internal and external. And the result of righteousness will be quietness and a confident trust forever. A quietness and a confident trust forever when we realize when we're awake to righteousness we realize we're made right because of Jesus the effect of righteousness you're going to have a peace internal and external you think of Jesus sleeping in the boat the storm is raging but he is at peace why because he didn't let the storm get in him he was at peace because he knew he was in right standing with the father and you and I have the same ability to be at peace no matter what hell we might be going through on earth. No matter what storm we're facing, we can have internal and external peace, and we're going to have this confident trust forever. He says the, the effect of righteousness is peace. The result of righteousness is quietness and confident trust. You're going to have this inward knowing, this inward assurance. Jesus, he operated with this confidence. You say, yeah, but that's Jesus. He is, a, he is the Son of God. He was operating as a man, anointed by the Spirit of God, just like you and I. And if we are born again children of God, Jesus is our brother. We are children of God, and we can have the same confidence because we have the same Spirit, and we we have the same standing with God as Jesus did. We are made righteous because of Jesus. Be confident because of Jesus. Have this peace because of Jesus. He says righteousness, this is what it produces. There's a boldness about you. You think different. You believe different. You talk different. You pray different because you're right. You're right. Romans 8 verses 14 and 16 it says, all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For the Spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more into bondage to fear, but you have received the Spirit of adoption, the Spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father, Father. The Spirit Himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. If you're really born again, if you've really believed in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and you've really declared with your mouth, Jesus, you are my Lord, the Bible says, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, unto right standing with God, and with the mouth confession is made, Jesus, you are my Lord. Boom. Now you're made right. And it says, now when you look into your spirit, man, it's going to be calling. He is my father. He is my source. He says, that's how you know that you're a son of God. There's this confidence that you're, that you're made right. Listen to Philippians 2, 5. And, and when you think about Jesus, how he spoke to the storms, how he commanded Lazarus to come back to life, how he lifted up the five loaves and the two fish and multiplied and fed 20,000. He did that because he knew he was right with the Father. And you and I have that same ability, the same confidence that we're right. Philippians 2, 5, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Jesus operated in his authority, and he was humble and confident because he knew he was right. He wasn't checking to see if he was right. He knew he was right. He wasn't checking to see if he had authority. He knew he had authority because he was right. He said, now let this same mindset awake to righteousness, sin not, let the same humility, humility is saying about yourself what God says about you. Humility is not degrading yourself. It's not saying you're unworthy and you're just a worm and you're no good. No, you're worthy because of Jesus. You're made right because of Jesus. The power of the blood cleanses you. He says, now let this same mindset, this same attitude, this same humility, 
be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. You're made right. Listen to how Jesus overcame Satan because he was right. Okay? First, he overcame Satan in his earthly ministry. Matthew chapter 4, Satan would come to tempt him, and he would come back with it as written. Remember, he told him, he says, if you're the son of God, turn this rock into bread. And Jesus said, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He would come back with, it is written. How do you and I overcome Satan in our earthly ministry? It is written. Know the word of God. Have a righteous mindset. Have a righteous heart. Think right. Believe right. Talk right. It is written. It is written. Always wins. The word always wins. So find the scripture for your situation. Begin to believe it. Act upon it. Declare it. Do it. And you win. The second way he defeated Satan was in the death, the burial, and the resurrections. Colossians chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, it says he disarmed Satan. He made him of no effect. Revelations 1, it says that he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he gave the authority back to you and I. So that's the second place that he, he defeated him in his earthly ministry. He defeated him on the, the cross, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and then he defeated him the, the, one of the greatest victories is when man regained righteousness. So Adam was made right, then he sinned, he was made wrong. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, because of sin, man was separated, sin went upon all man, but through Jesus you and I are made right again. The greatest victory is when Jesus regained the authority for you and I. And ever since then, we've had the opportunity to believe upon Jesus, realize we are made right, and overcome in this life. The greatest victory, one of the greatest victories, is when man who was made in the image and likeness of God came back into place of relationship with Almighty God through Jesus and now the man knows he's right and now the man thinks right and now we believe right and talk right and we're confident and we're bold and we're overcoming and we're going forward all because of the reality of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Remember, he who knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're right. Wake up to your righteousness and let's begin to be everything we're called and created to be. Hey, this is Trey Johnson. Thank you so much for joining me again today. And I look forward to talking to you again real soon. God bless you guys. I know these segments aren't very long, but it gives us an opportunity to grow in our relationship with God. I hope you got something out of today. Let somebody know that we're going to be here again tomorrow, the next day. We're just going to keep digging into the things of God. We're going to position ourselves to experience all that God has for us. So I look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you guys.